What's going on everyone? So today we are going to look at fifth wheels and I am gonna try to stick to a budget range that I think makes sense for most first time buyers. So hold tight, we'll be right back. So we are out here at Ron Hoover RV and I am going to show you a couple fifth wheels that I think fit right into that comfortable spot of where most first time buyers are looking to purchase. Basically, when you're talking about fifth wheels, there are so many different floor plans and so many different price ranges from different manufacturers, ranging everywhere from you know the mid 30s all the way up to the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And the goal of this video is to try to focus on units that most first time buyers might be interested in. So I'm not gonna take you on fifth wheels that are gonna cost over $80,000 or fifth wheels that are gonna be so custom you can't find them. I want you to be able to go to your local dealership or go to a dealership like Ron Hoover and find something that will work well for you, especially if this is gonna be your first unit. So the first one we're gonna take a look at is this Keystone Hideout. This unit right here is gonna be really what a lot of people might look at, especially if they think they wanna get into a fifth wheel that they feel is half ton towable. Now, a few things to keep in mind about this whole half ton towable thing is, there are very, very, very few fifth wheels that are truly half ton towable. Let me explain. So this Keystone has an unloaded vehicle weight rating of 9,190 pounds with a cargo capacity of 2,450 pounds, which puts the gross vehicle weight rating of this unit right at 11,640 pounds, which means that the weight of this specific RV in terms of what's gonna be over the back of your truck is gonna be closer to about 2,000 pounds. So because this unit is listed as a half ton towable fifth wheel, a lot of people think, well, obviously my half ton truck should be able to tow this. What most people aren't aware of is that the maximum weight capacity for most half ton trucks is anywhere between about 1,200 pounds to about 1,900 pounds. 1,500 pounds is generally gonna be the average for most crew cab, four wheel drive pickup trucks, modern ones at least. The challenge you're gonna have is, not only is the fifth wheel gonna be right at the maximum payload capacity of your vehicle, that's not taking into account the people or the supplies in your vehicle. The minute you add your family plus the cargo and everything else you carry, you're probably gonna be closer to about 800 to 1,000 pounds over the maximum carrying capacity of your truck, which can lead to problems. Even with airbags leveling out the ride of your vehicle, it does not mean your vehicle is rated at carrying that much or even more stopping that much. So even if you're looking at a pickup truck like let's say a Nissan Titan XD or a Ford F-150 with the max tow capability, you may see 1,500 pound to 2,800 pound maximum payload capabilities. You still must take into account the wheelbase of your truck, the cab configuration, the tires, the trim package, as well as the manufacturer's rating for your specific truck, which should be on a sticker right inside of your driver's side door jam. What you need to be aware of is even those trucks that are listed at carrying greater weight doesn't necessarily mean that it can pull something like this. So again, you wanna be very, very careful when it comes to what you're gonna hitch up to a half ton truck. For me, I would not tow a fifth wheel, any fifth wheel, unless I had at least a three quarter ton pickup truck. Another thing to think about, most of your half ton towable fifth wheels are gonna have 15 inch wheel package and they're gonna have generally the same type of tires that you'd get on a travel trailer. In most cases, if you can opt for an eight lug wheel, which means that you're gonna have a heavier duty axle, that would be the way to go just from a safety perspective. It's always good to have overkill from an axle perspective. And if you can opt for a better tire, that would even be better. So what I would generally say is go for the very best tire package that they can get you. And if they can offer you like a 7,000 or a 6,000 pound Dexter axle upgrade, I would even go for that as well. As you can see, there are steel steps going into this Keystone. This interior floor plan is one that a lot of first timers really fall in love with. I'm not a huge fan of it, but the good thing is, is there are a lot of different floor plans to choose from when it comes to fifth wheels. One of the reasons why I'm not a huge fan of this floor plan is simply because from a seating perspective, your passengers are always going to be looking at the TV with their head turned sideways. 
there is no real comfortable position to be in, so you simply look straight forward at your TV unless you're laying down on this couch. And this is more of a love seat style sofa, so it's not very long. And in essence, only one person would be able to watch TV in that position. I do like these U-shaped dinettes. They're very, very nice, uh, mainly because they seat quite a few more people than your standard you know, front and back dinette. You can wrap people around it. So I do like dinettes like this. Generally, you're gonna get some type of underseat storage with this type of dinette. There's a handle for this one. And these also turn into a bed. And because it's a U-shape, it turns into a much larger bed. Now here is your kitchen area. This is one of those laminated solid surface countertops. So it's essentially a wood with a laminate coating on top of it. I prefer a sink with a divider. I think for first timers, a lot of them see this huge basin and they think this is preferable. But after you've been doing it for a while, you really prefer a divider. That way you can wash and dry and you can kind of separate your dishes. But back to the floor plan. This is an okay floor plan for some people. Some people like this floor plan and this is one that makes a lot of sense. One of the reasons why people like this floor plan isn't necessarily because of the layout in here, it's because you get a rear bunkhouse. So most of the floor plans that have that living room kitchen configuration are gonna be bunkhouse models, simply because it opens the entire back of the coach up to bunk beds. So this one's gonna have a pocket here with your TV and cable connections. It's got a bunk above, as well as a flip up bunk here. So this one folds up, most of them do this. And then you're gonna have some folding chairs at the bottom. These essentially turn into a large bed at the bottom. The bottoms fold out and it fills this entire back area up with a bed. And it's almost a king size bed, so you get a lot of room. If you are looking for a floor plan that gives you really good isolation between the people in the living room, the bunkhouse in the back, and the master bedroom up front, this is that type of floor plan. I just don't personally care for this living arrangement. The travel trailer that we had at first had this type of floor plan, and we didn't care for it simply because you felt disconnected from the other people in the RV. So if you had the kids sitting here and the parents sitting there, it felt as if you were sitting in separate areas as opposed to having a dialogue as a family together. It's not a bad floor plan. People do like this. This is probably the most popular floor plan, but I do encourage you to think about it. And if you're gonna look at these, sit down in the sofa, have your, you know, maybe kids sit down in the dinette area and really see if it's a comfortable arrangement for you, if it makes sense for you. And again, the bunk area sometimes makes up for it. Just having this large room in the back, something that you can really use for a larger family and to really have that extra room this might be something you're looking for. Now, as we work our way up to the master bedroom area, it is a queen size bed. This unit does have dual ACs, which I absolutely recommend if you're able to budget for it. But there's a lot of room in this bedroom. Now, one of the things that you're gonna notice simply because this is a lower um, RV in general is that the floor elevates here and underneath there is essentially the overhang of the front of the RV. So you do have to step up to get into the bed area. Many fifth wheels are gonna have a slide out right here that allows the bed to actually slide out this way so you have more room in front of it and around it. And it also opens you up to more wardrobe space. This will be your door to get into the bathroom. A unique feature of this specific RV is that it has a half bathroom in the master bedroom, which I think is pretty ingenious. That is a really, really nice feature. One thing I do wanna point out, you're gonna see things like this when you're shopping for RVs. When we were first shopping for our travel trailer, we noticed trim and things like this pulling away on almost every single one of them, including some very, very expensive models. Now, I'm not gonna say that that's acceptable, but what I will tell you is the reason why you see that is when they cut these trim pieces, they cut them exactly to fit. As you start driving down the road, as the wood expands, contracts, and just moves from different elevations, different climates, it's gonna make things like this possibly pop off or just pull out during that expansion and contracting. Nice little storage area as you exit the bedroom. Now, the main bathroom in this specific unit is back here. This is gonna be your traditional tub basin style shower tub that you get in these units. I 
personally didn't really care for the one that we had in our travel trailer, which is exactly the same. But one thing that makes this one a little bit nicer is because it's a fifth wheel, the ceiling is significantly taller. So on the travel trailer, the ceiling stopped right about here, which is at about the six, six and a half foot mark. This one goes up to, looks like almost a full seven, seven and a half feet. And the actual rail at the top is bowed out. So you're going to have more room inside this unit to take a shower. One thing to keep in mind though is that the tub is elevated off the floor about 10 inches. So it is a little higher than the bottom of the floor. Having a secondary exit entrance from your bathroom is really nice, especially if you have kids who might bring in dirt, grease, bugs, grime, things like that, simply because you can kind of isolate it to this area, have them clean up and shower before they come into the main coach. Some people absolutely will only buy an RV if it has this secondary entrance. This unit does have a porcelain, which I think I've told most people are pretty much standard now on fifth wheels. One way you can tell, it has that glass rock sound to it when you tap it. Much, much preferred over a plastic toilet. Now, if you're looking at the refrigerator and you're trying to determine if you want a residential or gas electric, you really have to ask yourself the question, where am I gonna use my fifth wheel? If you're primarily using it at RV parks with full connections, then I would say a residential would be fine. If you plan on doing any type of boondocking or going out to an area where you may not have electricity, then gas electric is generally the way you wanna go. Another scenario would be if you're going to a place and you maybe only have a 30 amp connection or you only have a connection that's not gonna provide enough power for everything in your coach, well then if you're trying to save power in that sense, you can always switch your gas electric refrigerator to gas and not have to pull off of the electrical system. But that is the type of question you're gonna to wanna to ask if you are trying to figure out whether you want a residential or a gas refrigerator, where am I gonna be using my RV and what scenario will I be in that I potentially may not have power for my refrigerator? And real quick before I exit this RV, I just wanted to show you what I was talking about. I'm sitting in the couch right now, and as you can see, the TV is here off to my left. So if I'm watching it, not only is it kind of a weird angle, but I'm watching it with my head slightly turned to the left. Now this specific TV is on a mount that allows it to come out and articulate slightly like this, but that's still not ideal for me. I'd prefer the TV right in front of me, which of course in this floor plan isn't possible. And they have a couple of these floor plans where they move the dinette over here, they move the refrigerator right here, the sofa is right here, and it looks straight at the TV, which would kind of be on a wall right there. So it's a little bit better for you to watch without straining your neck to one side or the other. So on an RV of this price range of this size, you're generally not going to see any type of auto leveling system. I actually have never seen auto leveling on half ton towable fifth wheels. You will usually get your electric stabilizer jacks, which you can see on the back right there. And on the front, of course, those are going to be electric uh, landing gear. This model does have an outside kitchen, which outside kitchens generally span the entire cost of RVs. You can go to the most basic model, lowest cost RVs and get them equipped with outside kitchens if the floor plan allows for it, all the way up to the most expensive. This specific RV, they're asking about $33,000 for. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you take a moment, give me a thumbs up. I also would like to thank Ron Hoover here in Corpus Christi for allowing me to walk around their lot and film their inventory. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. I will talk to you again soon.